you. That was a great little segue that uh, Kimberly gave us uh, to introduce uh, the workshop activity. So uh, uh, without any further ado, um, good afternoon. My name is Julie Day and this is my esteemed colleague, Glenn Kelly. Uh, we, uh, it's this, welcome to the Utilising the Workshop uh, activity presentation. So the workshop activity is powerful, as already mentioned, and of necessity, a somewhat convoluted Moodle activity. And for some of you here today, uh, it's because it has sat in the corner of your ad activity screen, untouched, accusingly for too long. So if we can make you a little more comfortable uh, with the notion of getting in there and using it, uh, if we can demonstrate that you can have a reason to do so, then hopefully the next 11 minutes of your time will be well spent. But first, um, a quick commercial. We're members of the Regional TAFE Alliance, which is a project of the Victorian TAFE Association based around collaboration across all regional TAFEs in Victoria. We develop blended learning content and assessments within Moodle. So this is the team. There's five of us. Uh, the other three are here. Um, we're all embedded in our regional TAFEs, but regularly meet up physically. We Zoom at least once a day. We have a constant flow of chat using Zoom chat uh, between us as we troubleshoot and encourage and crack jokes and help each other. So it can really feel like my four uh, fellow instructional designers are in the same room with me. In our project, we harvest content from, the from the, our various tastes, create best practice assessments, build learning, contents, uh, learning content in Moodle, mainly interactive books, assignments, quizzes, H5P activities, forums, and we redistribute them. We share back to the regional TAFEs. So here's a bit of a roadmap. This map shows a generalised view of how peer assessment can work. Um, the instructor sets up the assessment with criteria or and rubric. Students submit their assessments, then there is an allocation of assessments that may or may not be automated, and it may or may not be blind. Students mark each other's work, and the teacher can intervene if necessary. Multiple feedback is supplied. The process is one that Moodle supports very well through the workshop tool. This map is therefore a high-level look at exactly what, is, what it is we are doing with the workshop module. So a Moodle workshop has some of the same features as an assignment. The submission process and the rubrics are common, but it is a lot more powerful. If I am an assignment, then this gentleman here is a workshop, far more powerful. Additional features of workshop include allocation and management of assignments and the management of the peer assessment that ultimately outputs two results to the gradebook, an aggradation of the marks that people have given as feedback and a mark that measures the quality of how well the students have assessed each other. So this is an empty workshop. We suspect workshops are not used a lot, and from what we've heard today, that seems to be statistically correct. So how many people in the room have used them? Okay, a small spattering here and there. For some of us, it may be just that it's just a bridge too far or a tool that's just too tricky. But here's the truth. There is considerable setup, lots of instructions, there's five phases to move between. Running a test requires a lot of time and requires jumping in and out and admin privileges. There is a lot to manage, but we would put it to you, our fellow Moodlers, that it does work and that in the proper context, it is a great tool. We've used um, workshop in the unit Make a Presentation. It's a unit that's ideally suited for this kind of thing, um, for peer assessment. So in the example that we're going to give you a brief look at, students submit links to presentations, uh, which are basically videos, videos of themselves doing a practice run at delivering a presentation they created as part of their assessment for that particular unit. So 40 years ago, I remember when uh, 
as a student, we would swap each other's uh, exam papers and the, student would, uh, the teacher would read out the uh, answers and we would mark each other's papers. What we're talking about here is a lot more sophisticated than that. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is students being made to carefully examine the criteria or the rubric or the aspects um, to make judgments that can help them understand on a deeper level what it is that they're learning. What is being judged here is the kind of question they're asking themselves. How well did the assessee, which may be another student, meet the criteria? How well did I, in turn, meet the criteria? So as a learning tool, peer assessment is rated as one of the best experiences for increasing learner self-knowledge and in developing skills in providing feedback. A bit more on that. So providing feedback both the receiving and the giving is a critical part of effective learning. So most teaching relies on the instructor providing feedback rather than the other way around. But with the workshop, there exists a feedback loop, if you like, uh, bet a, be between the learner to the other learners, so that's peer to peer, the learner to the instructor, and the learner to themselves. Here's where it gets a little bit complicated, and this is the initial setup the setup screen that you return to again and again when you're setting up a workshop. So you can see that there are four phases plus the closed phase. A lot of work is done in each of the phases. Some of it can be automated. Um, I think our experience is that probably it's best that a lot of it be maintained in a manual mode just so that you know what's going on. But you can see that basically, you know, there's 10 ticks up there, and each of those things requires some kind of um, teacher involvement quite often. So it is kind of relatively complicated. So we elected to use the accumulative grading in which comments and a mark are given in relation to a specified aspects. There are two elements to setting up these grades. The first is the grade of the student's own submission, so that's called the grade for submission. And the second is the grade for the quality of their skills in assessing their peers, which is called the grade for assessment. As you move between the phases, this screen or, or similar screens come up. So in moving now to the submission phase, students now can create their submissions. But there's a warning here that you've got to remember uh, that though the grading st strategies can't be changed once the submission phase has been entered, So this is what the submission process looks like to two separate students. They have up uploaded a link to a YouTube video and at this stage they can still edit or delete it. But you as the instructor have not yet allocated students to review and you may elect to automate this if you wish. So in this particular screen you can see the participants listed in the middle um, and on the left-hand side of that, participant reviewed by or participant is reviewer of. And basically, you can uh, automate that process if you choose, make it random, or you as the teacher can manually set it up as you wish. So we're about to switch from submission to the assessment phase here. So in the assessment phase, students begin assessing submissions allocated to them and have their assessments assessed by their peers. The instructions are added in the setup stage that should provide your students with sufficient information to work out what they need to do, uh, your criteria for reviewing, and how they go about do it, doing it. Back one. So, is that the one? Oh, sorry, this one. Thank you. So, currently the workshop activity only has one grading evaluation method that's called comparison with the best assessment. This means that the grade for assessment is calculated by comparing the average grade with how far away the student is from that grade. Just jump forward to the next slide. So you can see in the last and the third last column 
what's actually going on. That the um, mark based on the average score from all students, that includes the teacher and potentially the student themselves, is given under the grade for submission column. That, you'll recall, we set up out of 80. In the final column, you have the mark based on the good or poor marking, their judgment is compared to the average. And so two marks are outputted to the grade book. Um, can we skip the one I made in Spanish? That's, That's fine. That's fine. All right. That one? Yep. Sorry, we just got out of order a little bit there. <laughs> so here is the student view, is that right? Yes. For whilst in the assessment phase. So note that the, this does not, that does not have to be names associated with who they are assessing. It can be set to anonymous, but that is our permission setting, so you might not have access to do that. So on the right hand side, you can see the assessor has given a mark and a comment for aspect one. All right, so here we are in the grading evaluation phase, and that takes us to the screen here that we've already talked about. Okay, where you have those two essential columns, basically the output of what it is that you're trying to do here. Let's jump to this. Yep, sure. So there's two questions that are ultimately being asked by the workshop activity. How well did I do as a student? So that's my submission. And then how well did I do as a marker of others? And that's your uh, mark you get for being an assessor. So, if done properly and carefully, uh, we think that the sum, which is outputted, can be greater than the two individual parts, and that by turning the student into an assessor, they become a better, deeper student of themselves through others. And here's the final stage where you close um, the workshop. It's not until we close it that the student will have their results appear in the gradebook, as shown by the two arrows down there. The process is now complete. So some feedback. Is there a downside to workshops? These are some issues that we've come up against. So we think that the lack of clarity in instructions or with instructions, make sure you're very clear to your learners what you require them to do. Have that well set up if you can beforehand. Students may need a fair bit of guidance through the process, so that might require a little bit more of your time. Late submissions and low participation rates from your learners can increase the teacher management time. So be aware of that. Uh, we don't recommend it at this stage as a summative assessment, more of a learning activity. Um, if you're more familiar with it and you, you find that you are uh, well prepped to use it, then go ahead by all means. But that was just our, our thought. So what's positive? The feedback loop, as we've mentioned already, uh, and the responsibi responsibility and the consequences that it implies to your learners. The deeper learning that the students get in their critical thinking and in learning how to frame constructive feedback. And the collaboration they receive from working with others and seeing where they actually fit in into the mix with the other students. So the final slide. Um, I only became aware the workshop, as Julie alluded to initially, uh, was something that just sat in the corner. I didn't think about it. I kind of worried that I didn't know anything about it. The teacher came up to me five or six months ago and said, you're a Moodle person, you can teach me this particular tool. And that's basically where that was the uh, initial incentive for us basically using it in m the maker presentation unit where it certainly belongs. It builds students' learning and self-confidence because they become the teacher. Um, it ensures that the, their skills in reviewing and assessing the standard of their own work, um, as well as others, is really given, you know, primary focus. It helps, I think, build a cohesive online learning environment. And although we skip through, you know, the setup of it and it looks fairly complicated, it's, it's not so much that it's complicated, it's just a bit long-winded. And that's necessary because the result that you obtain at the end of it is multi-dimensional and, and worthwhile. So thank you for your time today. We appreciate the opportunity to present at Moodle Boot 18 Brisbane. Any questions?